Last stroke. Sound like your motor. 57.36 cc, I mean uh, inches. And your 940.2 cc. Just kind of narrowing it down real close. What you got here? So you gone from 45 inches to 57 and a third. Okay, so now we got to figure out our compression ratio. Yeah, whatever, leave me alone. Okay, we were calculating late. Right. So, what was our total number? 72. cc so we had eight cc in our gasket we had six cc in the in the cylinder we took off two cc for valve pop up which leaves us four and then we had 60 in both heads roughly one's 59 seven one's 59 eight <clears throat> so that works out to being 72 cc so all we got to do is put in 72 cc here now the one thing we don't know is is on the piston what our clearance is to the head. <clears throat> it's the only thing we don't know. So we're going to have 50, 60, was it 60, 72 cc is our overall. Piston dome is zero. So gasket clearance. Deck height is zero. So for the gasket, I'm going to put in uh, what our clearance is between our piston and our head's going to be. So we're going to run roughly somewhere between 30 and 40 thousandths, depending on where it comes in at. So let's just go split the difference with these 35, 1035. And yeah, sure what the hell. So that gives an effective CC of 75.6 CC. 0.035 piston clearance. So that would be 75.6 cc total. So that's the number you use to figure out your compression ratio. Which in our case gives it right up here. 7.22. See the number? Mm -hmm. See it in the camera? What's up, gang? Nice, Mitty. So there's our numbers. So we got a 75.6 cc overall chamber size, which equal, equates out to a 7.22 to 1 compression ratio. So that's what we got. Get all figured out? We did something. We don't know if it's right, but it sounds good. Mm. So there's our 7.22 cc. Okay, calculating the lake. Sure, what the hell? It says you have a restrictive exhaust system. Jeez, imagine that. It didn't like that inch and a half pipe. An exhaust system is restricted. That's why we run an inch and three quarter pipe on a real race bike. <laughs> I think I still have the same parameters I left in there last time we played around the numbers. So is it close to be right this weekend? Oh yeah, he can push it down the hill. <laughs> it's a bitch going uphill though. Yeah. I don't know about them uphills. A little fun. Oh, there's your power curve. This is not the horsepower over here. <laughs> so theoretically your motor should put out 42 and a half foot pounds of torque. Well, 42 foot pounds, that's 44. And that's down there at 2,500-3,000 RPM, which would be nice if you had a real tranny on a bike. Realistically, it'd be over in this area. And then the horsepower looks like it'll be around 34 and a half horsepower peak. That's 5,500 RPM. Rev it way out. So there you go. So they claim they've been at 25 horsepower stock. Yeah. That's what they claimed. 
I never seen a torque rate on a stock 45. Now my military bike, as I recall, it was putting out somewhere between 38 and 42 on the horsepower. And it was all under 5,300 that went like that. So that was at 5,000. I have no idea what the torque was, it never told me. <coughs> but I'm sure it's more than that. <laughs> but anyway, that's our uh, proposed power curve for this bike. But the biggest thing is you have uh, some, uh, some needs a little work. Now, if you go in here and do a little analyze it. How's that work? I forget how that works. Uh, what RPM would you like your power peak to be at? <laughs> 75 hood or <laughs> So, I think we're pretty good at that 5500 area. Yeah. Too, but yeah. Uh, application would be a street strip. Anything on a motorcycle street strip because it ain't way below that. Make out a report. Yeah, whatever. Okay, it says your maximum exhaust back pressure is 6.2 PSI. This is very high. So take the muffler off. <laughs> and maybe a bigger head pipe wouldn't hurt. But oh well, we already knew that. Uh, intake manifold vacuum is 3.4 inches. This is very high also, limiting airflow. Evidently you have some airflow issues in your motor. I'm guessing that's because it's a flathead. <laughs> Updated? Get rid of the squirrel cage? Yeah, no squirrel cage. So your volume efficiency is 78.1. That's right on par with a piece of crap muscle car. <laughs> uh, it should be around 85 to 105, so we're a little, a little lacking. What else we got going on? Maximum fuel flow is 27 pounds per hour. That's 4.7 gallons per hour. So you got one hour of full throttle on your bike, you run out of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're going to require at least 14 pound injectors if you had a fuel injection system. <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about that one. I don't think they had it in 41, did they? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Fuel flow, airflow change, you said, yeah, whatever. I didn't tell you before. Mechanical efficiency is 68.6%. This is very low. That means you're not making much power. <laughs> what a shocker. It must be a flathead again. Uh, it says to pay close attention to short block. Maybe if we took out the stroke? <laughs> <laughs> that would take out all the power, though. We're going to leave that in there. Mechanical efficiency has some issues. Yeah, so reducing crankcase windage, re reducing stroke, <laughs> taking valve spring out of it. How's it know what valve spring we got in there? Reducing uh, engine operating RPM. Oh shit. Average piston speed is 4,200 uh, feet per minute at 5,500 feet. That's actually not bad. This is extremely high. <laughs> yeah, I ain't bad. My race bike, I was hitting 8,000. <laughs> <laughs> Five-inch stroke at uh, 7,500 is pretty high. <laughs> uh, max anticipate should be 5,000 feet per minute. Oh, I'm just coming on the cam with that or that number. So anyway, it doesn't like. It's not a car motor. We can't go by those things. So they're, they're telling you limit to 33 out, 3,000 to 4,500 max. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, this, this computer's not made for what we're doing here. You have an unsafe engine. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you got some inertia ram tuning at 6,900 RPM. That's where your intake manifold and everything works. Except it doesn't turn that fast. No, I won't turn that with the RPM of this life. <laughs> <laughs> Harleys have a very short intake system and it kills power. It's also very restrictive. You got two go together, it really screws it up. So that's why you want one car per cylinder to get max power. So um, yeah, you're a little bit under your uh, peak ram effect, so you have very little ram effect. So if you make it smaller and longer, it would help. It already said it was restrictive though, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, 
I think we'll, we're not going to worry about that one. Uh, yeah, some, it's a little bit low on the uh, RAM tuning effect. Uh, that's on the intake. What about the exhaust? Well, exhaust flow is 84%. This is somewhat high. All oh, your exhaust flow is good. I think that's relative to the intake system. I think that's what that's all about. Yeah. So you've got very high exhaust flow and really crappy intake flow. <laughs> In a very restrictive exhaust system. Uh, what's it want me to do? Increase duration on the intake. Reduce exhaust. So it, needs, it wants a smaller exhaust cam, a bigger intake cam. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Your dynamic compression ratio is 6.4. Considering stock was 5, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> they want you to be at 7 to 9. Eh, it's a flathead. Good luck on that. All right. Your estimated vacuum is going to be 8.3 inches. It says that's not good for idling. That runs really good compared to three like my bike has. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so what would that tell you? Not much. <laughs> What's your detonation tendency? Um, that's what I care about. Detonation knock index. Oh, it's not going to ping at all. It's way, way low. <laughs> of course, flat is ping a lot more than a regular car, so uh, you're still okay. Seven's your worst spot. So here's where your best power. This is where your torque is at down here. That's when you have the most power. Mm -hmm. 2,000 to 3,500. That's where you have the most cylinder pressure. Yeah, so that's it always pings where the most cylinder pressure is at. You know, see it drops off at 4,000, you're there. At 45 and 5,000, it's pretty even. And it drops more above that. So. And down here at idle, you're at 0.6, so you're, it's going to be a pretty torquey motor. But uh, we already knew that, so Harley, they're always torquey, sure. Now, if you take your exhaust system and take the muffler off, open header. Okay, let's see what that does for us. It said you had a restricted exhaust system before it said the intake was bad. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to gain you about 15 horsepower, you think? <laughs> I'll give it two. Let's see what happens. Two would be a lot. Probably more like one. Sometimes I surprise myself. It sounds better open, though. Ooh, 45.2 foot-pound max torque. So here's your average torque over here is what really matters. Ooh, you got maximum horsepower at 6,000 now. Ooh, we went up. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see, graph. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. And the last curve. Well, the torque stayed up pretty high. Too. Whoa, look at the difference in power. Jeez, that was more than two horsepower. From 35 to 42. That's seven horsepower right there. Boy, that'd be an act of God if you get anywhere near that much. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the torque, though. Yeah. That really makes it run nice. That's a long, flat curve. That's a pretty flat curve. And you, you do that by just having the... Uh, just take the muffler off. Take the muffler off. You want to pick up more power? You take the muffler off, and you put a, a straight pipe that long on the back of it, and that'll gain even more. That's really noisy. That's a 45, it ain't very noisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a pretty good gain. That's 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 respectable there. That that's noticeable. <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean it Boy, that I'm shocked. That's that's a big difference. I wonder I wonder what it had on there for a stock exhaust system. It must have been pretty pretty constipated. <laughs> <laughs> now if you run that stock little tip fishtail muffler, you would have something. You would have a change like that. Well that's what I had. Because on my military bike, I took that little flat slot that's five quarter inch to five sixteenths, and I opened it up to a half inch. Oh, that was night and day. Well, that made that thing come to life. Yeah, so that's kind of what you're feeling. That is what happens too. So that might be how much you really gain. It makes it made a huge difference. But uh, it takes a little bit of metal fabrication to do that. What's that? Uh, so what? That flat spot where the horsepower is? What is that? How it's, high it's is It's the that? same. That's, uh, this is 40 and 45, so... Yeah, so 42? You're 42, 42 and a half. Wow. 42.6. That's a big change. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I made a big difference. Because you were peaked right here. Yeah. But see, it's progressively just gets more and more and more as you go. It's a nice steady increase all the way up. You know, this right here is noticeable. This is, uh, see, this is five horsepower. So that's two and a half horsepower right there. That's a solid two horsepower there. That's very noticeable. Actually, I figured if you gain that much total, it'd be nice. But on a motorcycle, if you a three horsepower change is very noticeable on a bike. Very noticeable. Yeah, that's a night and day change. But this here would be just it's like this is like going from a stock motor to a hot rod motor right there. It's wow. a tremendous difference in power. So now if you take that and keep it, and you go back to the exhaust system and you add on a little more length back here. Twenty five. Let's say you add that. We go from twenty five, we ought to add about fifteen more. You go from uh, 25 up to 40 inches. <clears throat> so that's putting a collector on the back. That's putting just a big straight section of tube on it. <clears throat> now you got to take all these numbers with a grain of salt. These are not real world. It just kind of tells you what happens when you do different things. Don't believe these numbers, believe me. But I dialed it back enough on all the other numbers that I think they're kind of realistic for this application. Uh, graph. So there's what happened when we lengthened the pipe. So it, uh, it didn't like it very much on the top. It really screwed it up through here. Yeah, I messed up the torque. It gained here, though. Look at that gain. Yeah, yeah. But it really screwed up the carburation here in the street area. This is your street riding RPM here. On a 45, it's more like over here. Is your, you're going to be 3,000 to 4,500 on this 45 because the gearing is yeah. really crappy on those bikes. I'm surprised it killed it right there. So it helped it, but it didn't help it real. You know. The gains that you gained, you lost more. But like I said, this, this is not real world. It just kind of gives you an idea what's going on. So let's try a little bit less of that. He didn't really like that too much, so let's drop it back to about 33. That's half the gain. <clears throat> so the computer's not seeing that you got a real short pipe and a real long pipe. It's just seeing one big length because you can't put in the motorcycle type things in this computer program. It's made for cars, not bikes. That was worth it. See, we gained more power, but we gained more power from 3,700 up to the peak. So at your high, if you're trying to drive on the freeway around here and drive at 80, that's what you need it to be. Because you're yeah. going to be way out here at 4,500 RPM on the freeway if you're anywhere near that kind of speed. you will probably be 5,000 RPM. And see the torque, is, look how flat that torque is. <laughs> you took a hit right here, though. Something's not happy right in this area, but it's... From here on, it's just nice. It really carries out for high-speed driving. So if you're going to drive at 70 to 80 miles an hour on the bike, this is going to be really good. If you're going to drive at slower speeds, you kind of got hurt because that's down here where the negatives are at. So it's just kind of, you play around with it. That's when a race bike, you cut the, you play around the exhaust tube, you cut off an inch at a time, <laughs> or a couple inches until you, you kind of find the sweet spot because, it, you, you know, it does make differences. So. But yeah, that was a pretty good gain there. So if you make it a little bit shorter, you'll probably gain some more. Uh, so we go to 30 inches. <clears throat> so one of these two numbers would be the one to shoot for. This should pick up the, the low end a little bit and cut the top just slightly. But probably about pretty average. Hopefully it'll be pretty flat. So that'd be best overall, hopefully. But like I said, these numbers are not real world. So. Just playing with numbers, all it is. Computers are not real world. Doesn't matter what they say on these stupid programs. And this is not a cheap program either. This is a high end one.
Not a big difference, but... Uh, no. You're, in the, you're kind of in the sweet spot. Yeah. So 30 to 33 is kind of the sweet spot. We gained a little bit right here. We lost a little bit everywhere else. So overall, yeah, this is going to be more important here than over here. So I think it's the 30 number is probably better than 33, but you're in that area where it's not really making any changes. So anywhere in that kind of area, you, you won't really notice this too much. <clears throat> you notice this be a slightly more perky in the low end. I don't think you'd notice it on top. There's too much vibrating and rattling going on up there that I notice. <laughs> Notice a horsepower difference, if it's even a horsepower, that might even be half a horsepower. You gotta look at, see what the numbers are. That's five total, so that's less than one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think you notice it. You, know, you pretty much, in anywhere in that area is fine. So that all makes a big difference there. Yeah, we'll keep that one. What really would help is if the, if the exhaust pipe was bigger. I think that's where your game would be. System. See, we're an inch and a half pipe. If you went up to 1.6 inches, that's a one and three quarter pipe, thick wall. And, uh, that'll uncork it. That should make it run better. We'll see. You never know. Oh, we didn't write down our compression number. Let me go back and see what that is. It was 7.22, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Damn. It didn't make much difference at all. Damn, I think it'd make a big difference. It hurt it more than it helped it. That's surprising. There you go. Big pipe didn't help, but the motor's too small. <laughs> it doesn't need it. So, according to this, but, uh, it does want to have a little bit shorter pipe in there. I think about that 30 inch overall length. And it does want to have the, uh, it wants to lose that muffler. So, restrictive mufflers kill power. That's all that proves. So. All right, so that's where we're at on that one. No, we don't like that change. Exhaust. Go back to 1.4. We want that back at 25. You can run a street bike on this thing. Okay, calculate. So this is the difference between the best we got and the worst. <laughs> so this will be our gain when you take the muffler off, basically. Then you run about a, maybe about a eight to 10 inch collector on the back or extension. We'll go 25 to 30, well, I was five to eight inch extension. So make it six. So that's your gain. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Big difference. Even though you got a big flat curve here, big, yeah, but it's still that's because higher. the gain right here was huge. Yeah. <laughs> the first power went way up too. Oh yeah, you get the same dip in here too, but it's still it didn't get anywhere near back to where it was restricted. So and it carries it on out. You notice how the torque, the power peaks don't change much. See. Yep. Because that's the cam dictates kind of where that's going to be, and your basic port size matters, but. Your flow difference is what makes the power increase or decrease. The cam time is what tells you where it's going to be here or it's going to be over here, the power curves. Now, if you took the stroke out of the motor made the motor smaller, the same power level would happen, but it would happen over here. <laughs> it, would have, it would have to rev out another 800 RPM more to get the same power level if the ports could keep up with it. But see, the smaller motor, would, with equal port flow, it doesn't matter what size the motor is. It just it, the same horsepower will happen just at a different RPM. That's why the small motors you have to rev the piss out and make them go fast. And big stroker motors you don't have to, because the ports don't have any air. You only get you got the same horsepower. You just you just gain all this torque with the stroker. You don't have it. The stock motor, the stroker, the torque would be way here. The horsepower would be the same, but the power is here. 
That's why a stroker will outrun a regular motor, equal for equal. So anyway, so there's your difference. So <clears throat> that just tells you you need to work on the muffler. <laughs> That's a big gain. The other thing is we're going to have to uh, not have the. Um, This is what 7.22 compression. We can't cut the head out unless we want to lose more compression. 7.22 to 1. So that's our number, 7.22. So I think it's a good number to stay up. Okay. So we want to cut the head out over here a little bit. Here, grab this. So if I was at 8 to 1 compression, I'd be cutting on the head some more, but seeing how we're at, I think we're just going to go ahead and leave it. So this here was a change right here. And I'm not sure how much this is going to actually lose, compression-wise, if I cut that out to that. We probably wouldn't lose very much. See, I can lay that over and just pull that edge back a little bit, but I don't know if that's going to help us a lot on the airflow. If you laid it back a little, you're talking maybe one cc different, which is not going to affect our compression a lot. We'd probably gain, we'll probably only lose a little bit of power if we do that. We should gain some airflow maybe. But see, that's the unknown. You have to test it. Because all these things don't mean nothing. You got to put in the bike and go down the track, get a time flip, and it'll tell you. It's just it's all about modifying little, little changes here and there and see what happens. But overall, I think we're pretty good. I'm surprised these things are as equal as they are in the compression ratio because this thing's way the hell different over here. This is definitely not going to help our flow having that in there, so we got to fill this in. And we'll just open it up a little bit more on this one to bring the compression more even. And this one here has just a little hiccup right here. I'll probably weld that up right there. But, uh, but anyway, that's what we got for now. So we're going to do some more thinking, figure out what we're going to do, and we'll be back. Okay, we're doing a little bit of calculations here to see what happens. We change things around a little bit on CCs and piston clearance. So if we change our piston clearance, that's piston to head clearance, uh, every 5 thousands that we move the piston up or down, we change the compression by 0.04. And every cc we change combustion chamber overall size, we change it 0.08 to 0 0.07 to 0.08, change in the compression. So that would be a tenth of a point if you moved like one and a half cc or one point one and a quarter cc would equal about one tenth of a compression point. The piston you'd have to move it to about 12 thou to make that same change. So it's not very sensitive on our numbers. We're at that 722 number right now. So if I went in here and cut this out a little bit in here to gain some flow, I doubt if I'd gain, we're looking about maybe one cc here, maybe cc and a half at the outside, but probably more like one cc to do that change. As long as I don't cut the whole bottom away. And we're going to gain something by fixing that hole there. And this one's going to gain a bunch by just putting that back in there. That's, that'll be over a cc of welding right there. That might be a cc and a half time to fix all that. But you're going to do that same... We do the same cut either way, but yeah. So, effectively, if we change it, if we had a cc too, we dropped a 7.14 to 1 instead of 7 and a quarter to 1, 7 and 8 to 1. You going to notice that? Eh, not like too likely. Are we going to gain any more power from doing this? Eh, you never know. Who knows? It's, it's a guesstimate. Who knows? So basically we're kind of in the middle of what we're going to do on this stuff. So we'll think about it. At least those are the numbers. So as long as we got something to go by, we can, at least now we know what happened. We make changes. And uh, it, it all makes a difference in the long run. But it's just a matter of if it's worth all the effort and what the change is going to be. And like I said, the only change that really matters is what it is when you're done. What do you feel in your ass when you're going down the road? <laughs> so, there you go. All right, that's it for now.